All right, so uh, this talk is about distributed tracing with uh, open telemetry and uh, K-native. Um, I was supposed to do this talk with my colleague, Daniel. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it. He was actually supposed to be the main speaker. So uh, if you don't like this talk, then just blame him, OK? All right, um, so just a few words about myself. So uh, my name is uh, Kevin Dubois. I'm based in uh, Belgium. I uh, work for uh, Red Hat as a developer advocate. And um, yeah, I contribute also to some uh, community projects. You can find me on uh, all those channels. Um, so this talk is about observability, right? So being able to see uh, what's going on in, uh, well, in our applications. But maybe let's take a step back in, uh, into the past. So this. Uh, uh, soccer or football player, depending on where you're from. Uh, this is uh, a player called Silvio Piola. He played for uh, Lazio, which is my team. Um, and so in this picture, we see kind of a lot going on, right? We see like this guy in the back. He's lying on his back with his legs up. We see uh, our main player who may or may not have kicked the ball. Maybe he's going to score. I don't know. Maybe he got pulled down by the other player. We don't know, right? Because this happened in the past. There's no recording of this. Um, we have no data, no telemetry about what happened here. So fast forward to uh, a few years ago. So I don't know if anybody remembers this game, uh, Japan against uh, Spain. It was a pretty exciting game. And uh, so in this instance, we see that the ball seems to be out. And uh, Japan went on to score, I believe. Um, but th thankfully, in this case, we do have uh, data, right? We can go back in the past, we can see what happened, uh, and we can verify that, you know, really this ball was in or out because we actually have the exact image that shows this ball was in. It still doesn't look like it, but there's this tiny sliver that's still within the line. And so in uh, football or soccer, the rule is that the ball has to be completely out of the external line, right? So this was uh, a valid goal. And um, you know, thanks to having observability, we can verify that that's uh, actually what happened. So what does this have to do with software, of course? Um, well, we also want to have visibility into what happened. We want to be able to go back in the past and you know, see like, what happened in, uh, in this occasion, you know, if somebody uh, an, an end user or somebody from the business comes and tells us, hey, there was an issue with your software, you want to be able to go and find out what happened. You want to know exactly uh, for this particular request, this is what happened. And so that's what uh, uh, telemetry and open uh, and observability is all about. So from a developer perspective, you know, we want to know what is the health of my application? Is, it, uh, is the performance OK? Uh, if there's an error, what was the root cause um, of the error and the def or the defect? And um, what are some performance bottlenecks? You know, are certain requests taking a long time? And especially in distributed architectures where we may have you know, one service calling another service calling another service. Um, how can we trace through that and see, you know, like, first of all, how did the request go through our system? Uh, what happened to, uh, to, to our uh, requests? How long did each component take? And, and we can drill down into the details of that, right? So that's the ideal world of, uh, you know, observability and tracing. So in terms of uh, kind of the observability a main uh, component, so we have three, three main pillars. So on the one hand, we have metrics where we can find out, you know, like uh, all the good numbers that we're interested in, right? How long did it take? What is the uh, memory usage of my uh, JVM, for example? What is the garbage collector doing if you're uh, using a, a Java application, for example, you can get all those metrics and then find out, you know, like how can we improve our application or is there, is there an issue? Then also logs. I mean, most of you are probably aware of, uh, of logging. So being access to, uh, having access to certain data that, uh, that we're exporting in terms of logs. And then being able to trace through our application, which is the main uh, component that we're going to be talking about today. So uh, being able to go, uh, again, 
through uh, requests and exactly follow the trace of what was going on so we can find out you know what line of code is actually having issues what request was uh, was causing the damage here so where do you get started with this right because uh, if we look at the cloud native computing foundations landscape we can see that there's many tools out there um, and there's a lot of really good ones but you know you kind of have to pick and choose and um, you know there's kind of too many choices, right? So, um, but once you've made your choice, uh, a lot of the kind of more, let's say, uh, legacy tools, they're not open source or only certain components are open source and maybe you have one tool for the instrumentation of how to integrate this, uh, this um, uh, observability stack into your code. Uh, maybe you have something else uh, for collecting that data, then another one for processing that data. And it means that you, know, you kind of end up being locked into that provider because especially if you have to uh, instrument into your code, you have to uh, put certain libraries into your code, certain ways of, uh, of integrating with these tools, you end up with, uh, with a little bit of a mess if you would then want to switch to an another provider, right? In terms of the actual observability stack, it's a little bit less uh, complicated in the sense that you know, you, the, the migration from one tool to another isn't not necessarily that bad, uh, but if we have to refactor our code, that's, uh, that's not good, right? That's uh, gonna be a very expensive project. So we wanna make sure that what we're using for our observability in terms of instrumentation is gonna be um, open source ideally. Um, and so the industry has fortunately also uh, converged into, you know, like, hey, it's probably better if we use open source. That means that, you know, other uh, people who are using a different provider can come to my pro project if I'm uh, running a project, but it also means uh, that we can work in an open way, right? So in, we don't just create open source software, but also open standards, right? And so the industry has created this new kind of open standard for doing telemetry. So originally there was a project um, that was called Open Tracing, which was a nice tool for, uh, for tracing in an open source way. Um, and then there was another project called Open Census, and Open Census is more focused on kind of like edge um, uh, IoT kind of devices and doing the tracing for that. But so now we have, you know, multiple standards, multiple projects, and you know how it goes, right? I mean, you start with uh, 14 standards, now you add one that, you know, is going to be more standard and then you end up with 15 standards because the other ones are still there. So uh, fortunately in this case, the two projects actually uh, got together and said, hey, you know, we're both doing kind of uh, the same thing. We're both tackling the same thing in an open source way. Uh, let's converge into a new project and that's uh, open telemetry. And so uh, this is, yeah, you could say this is yet another standard, um, but yeah, you know, ideally the two other standards for, uh, for, uh, for open tracing and open census can uh, you know, kind of fade away. So open telemetry is a uh, relatively new project, um, but it's been uh, very popular in, uh, in the cloud native world, so you can see um, open telemetry was actually uh, after Kubernetes the most worked on project last year. So this is a very, uh, uh, very active project, and not just you know people working on uh, the core of open telemetry, but you know it's all these providers that are now integrating with open telemetry to have an open standard, so that we as developers can just use open telemetry specifications. And then it's kind of up to the platform engineers to decide you know, what, what tool is gonna ingest that data and, and handle that. So we have a nice open way of, uh, of working. So the components of um, open telemetry on the one hand is you know, providing a common specification for uh, you know, how can we uh, produce our telemetry, how can we send our telemetry, um, and then the second part is the instrumentation. So, you know, how can we actually integrate this into our code? And so we can do that with OpenTelemetry 
in different ways. We can do a push uh, system, we can do a pull system, we can have an agent uh, running on our systems that collects, that uh, sends the data. Um, we can uh, have libraries, uh, standard open telemetry libraries in our code um, and, and do that in a nice lightweight uh, way. And then also in terms of the collector, having a standard way of collecting this data uh, to you know, a provider that, uh, that handles it and you know, that you can actually use to consult your uh, telemetry. So um, this is fine, right? So we have now a tool for doing uh, tracing, but what about you know, distributed applications and especially serverless applications? So uh, with serverless applications, the idea is that you know, you're gonna scale up when there's uh, high demand and then scale back down potentially to zero uh, if there's no traffic, right? And you wait and then you know, when there's, once there's traffic again, you handle more requests. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about serverless before we continue with, uh, with the tracing part of it. So one project uh, that does that kind of in a Kubernetes native way is, uh, is Knative, it tries to make serverless kind of uh, seamless to work with uh, for developers. So on the one hand, makes it easier to uh, deploy to Kubernetes and then uh, automatically adds uh, auto scaling out of the box in terms of requests, right? It doesn't need to check for metrics in terms of uh, RAM and CPU. It just looks at you know, what kind of requests are coming in. Uh, if there's you know, a lot of requests come in, scale up. If there's no requests coming in, scale down to zero. So it's very reactive. Um, that's just one component of, uh, of Knative. There's uh, actually uh, quite a few interesting uh, capabilities that you can do with Knative in terms of eventing as well, so plugging in uh, different eventing systems. Um, but that's kind of beside the, the point of this talk right now. We're mostly interested in the, in the auto scaling. And then especially with the fact that, you know, if, you're, if you have a container running and you want to consult the data, the, the telemetry of it, that's you know, relatively easy because you can uh, you know, look into your pod and see what's going on. But with serverless, if it scales down to zero, then well, there's no more pods, there's no more containers, so how can we consult our data, right? So we need a distributed way of handling uh, this, and of course, uh, we'll do that with, uh, with open telemetry. Um, so I'm a, a Java developer at, uh, you know, at my core, and so for me it was interesting to do this uh, serverless uh, Java. Um, and so I don't know, you know how, how many Java developers are here? A few, nice, I like it. I'm always afraid to ask this question at, uh, <laughs> at CNCF events because, uh, um, but actually, uh, using Java with uh, cloud native and serverless isn't always so great because you know traditional Java, the idea was that it runs on these big kind of dedicated servers, and if you want to you know scale up, you know you do vertical scaling or you add CPU and memory. Um, and so, but the Java ecosystem is pretty awesome. There's a lot of uh, a lot of things that you can do with Java. A really great community. Um, and so, actually, there's been some, uh, some recent developments in Java over the last few years to make it uh, much nicer to, to use with cloud native and with serverless. And so one project that I'm particularly uh, passionate about is, uh, is Quarkus. So we're going to use Quarkus with Knative and OpenTelemetry in, uh, in a little demo in, uh, in just a little bit to show you kind of how they all work hand in hand as an example of how to use uh, OpenTelemetry. But again, you can use OpenTelemetry. Uh, it's uh, you know the, the idea is that it supports you know all uh, programming languages. So there's uh, instrumentation for the main languages like Go, uh, Node.js, Python, and and stuff like that too. But of course also uh, Java. But so uh, real quick, um, you know, kind of introduction on Quarkus. If you're not interested or not. Uh, you don't know Quarkus yet. So the idea is that it's a uh, supersonic subatomic Java. So very fast, very small footprint, uh, but still Java. So all those Java developers with their knowledge and their ecosystem can continue using it in kind of a cloud native uh, way. So the idea with, uh, with Quarkus is that it moves a lot of that stuff that Java usually does during startup time. It does a lot of optimization with the JVM 
it moves that to the build phase, and that's how it is able to uh, optimize that startup time a lot more. And then there's uh, projects out there like GraalVM to even do a native compilation of your application, and it starts up even faster and has a smaller footprint. But you know, uh, Quarkus does more kind of I, I wouldn't say magic because you know it's it's all very well documented, uh, but a lot of optimization for for cloud native development in terms of uh, performance, but also in terms of developer joy. And you're going to see in my uh, demo how I'm going to really uh, create um, interactions with Kubernetes and OpenTelemetry in a very easy way. Um, so yeah, the, you know, kind of the highlights of Quarkus. There's a focus on performance, on productivity. It's kind of, they call it a cube native uh, Java, so very easy to work with Kubernetes. And it focuses, again, on standards just like OpenTelemetry, right? Uh, just uh, main standards and not anything specific to, uh, to Quarkus itself. So let's uh, look at a little demo here. So who likes live demos? Hopefully everyone. <laughs> You never know what's going to go wrong, right? So uh, here's my little project that I've already created. So if you're, uh, if you're familiar with Java, you'll see that you know, we have our uh, pom.xml, and we have a source main Java folder and all that good stuff. Um, so uh, let's take a look at that and uh, run it real quick. So um, as you can see, in terms of dependencies, uh, in this case, my instrumentation is uh, in my dependency, so I have an open telemetry dependency, uh, one for uh, just uh, Quarkus open telemetry that's gonna automatically, out of the box, do the instrumentation so I don't need to add anything to my code to make this uh, work, and then I have uh, also a specific one for the further instrumentation using the open telemetry spec uh, to have also tracing capabilities into my database requests. So uh, let's, uh, let's run this real quick on my local machine so I can just do Quarkus uh, dev that's gonna start up this application on my local machine um, and actually even start up a container with, uh, with my dependency, with my database dependency, which is kind of handy. And so uh, let's see, hopefully this is uh, running. We have a connection to refuse, that's always fun. I'm gonna go look at my Podman desktop, and so it looks like our Postgres is running, but my tracing was not running, so I'll go ahead and get that started. Maybe I'll start this up real quick again to make sure that it makes its uh, connection. And then we're gonna make a few requests on our local machine, and then we'll deploy it, of course, to Kubernetes because that's kind of the, the main point, right? To <laughs> have this work in a distributed way, and I'll deploy this as a serverless application. So. Let's go look at our uh, browser, and so let's see, Mr. Firefox here, we can, oh, congratulations, your application is running. And so I have this uh, endpoint uh, places that just shows like uh, where I've been recently, and yes, I, the last one is Singapore, cool. <laughs> uh, so just uh, to let you also see, I don't have any dependencies on open telemetry in my code, right? So this is all just orchestrated by having the dependency on uh, open telemetry. So uh, let me make a few requests here. So I'm gonna hit refresh a couple times and then uh, go to my uh, local hosts uh, 16, blah, blah, blah. So I, in, in my case, I'm using Jaeger, but you can use uh, Tempo with our uh, friends here from, uh, from Grafana. Um, I'm, I'm using Jaeger in this case, and you can see that it automatically uh, integrated with, uh, with my application. So it was able to see that um, application, and now I can find the traces, um, and we can see 13 traces from, from my requests, and so I can see here, I called uh, endpoint places, there are three spans in there, and so I can see, you know, kind of uh, what uh, happened in my code, what processes were being called, and then uh, I can also see uh, the, um, the uh, database request. So let me uh, make this a little bit smaller. There we go. <laughs> Let's go back and then scroll down. Wow, this is... Uh... <laughs> And so I can also see my database request. How long did it take? Like uh, in this case, 135 uh, microseconds. We can see how long uh, the actual query took. 
which is hidden underneath here, the select statement. So I got all that data um, kind of out of the box in my Java application. And again, it's the same way with, uh, with other applications uh, by just adding the open telemetry uh, dependency to my project, right? So I can see that it's running on my local machine. Let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, stop this and then deploy it. Um, and so in this case, I just have a few application properties uh, to work uh, with my open telemetry here. So I have an, uh, an endpoint where my traces are gonna be collected. And then uh, just um, I, I'm formatting my data in a specific way, but by default, you would just uh, be able to do that too. And then uh, uh, just some uh, additional deployment target Knative so that it knows to deploy it uh, to Knative. So uh, I can create a, um, a, a container image with uh, just Quarkus image build. So it makes it pretty easy to create containers with, uh, with Quarkus. And we can see you know, in a few seconds, we have our container image. I'm not gonna push it uh, to my registry. Instead, I'm just gonna uh, deploy. So uh, I'm doing Quarkus deploy. Um, so Quarkus has this uh, Kubernetes uh, dependency and it creates uh, our YAMLs out of the box. So uh, because I have the Knative um, target, it creates a Knative service. So I don't need to worry about uh, creating kind of the default uh, structure here. And that's going to make it so we can deploy our application to Knative. And uh, I have the container concurrency set to one so that every request is going to uh, create a new um, container uh, an, an, a new pod, so we're going to see that it scales more in, in that way. So it's a little bit of a cheat because you wouldn't want to do this on production. For every request, create uh, create a, a separate pod if there's a concurrent request. Um, all right, so let's see if this is working. If uh, if we're deploying our application to Knative, uh, so I'm uh, using. Oh, uh, let's see what it's saying. Did I get logged out or something? Uh, maybe that's <laughs> see that's the fun of uh, of, of uh, live demos right so I'm gonna copy my login command here with a, get a token for it three login a couple times display token so this is a you know one of one way that you can log into an OpenShift cluster the Go back to our command line. If not, uh, we'll, uh, we'll deploy it from the UI. That's always a nice alternative. Okay, let's log in real quick. Come on. We need some holding music. Who can play some holding music? Oh, wow. It's not, uh, oh no, that's, uh, I, th I thought I saw more errors, but it still hasn't gone uh, forward. All right, come on. Why is it taking so long? If not, all right, my patience has run out, so I was gonna show this from, uh, from the application, but what I can also do is just uh, add to project, uh, container image, and then uh, I have, of course, uh, an image of, uh, already ready, and I'm gonna deploy that to a uh, new application, Quarkus, and then uh, I want to make this, of course, a serverless deployment. Otherwise, we're not using Knative. And I want to make it so that it scales. Uh, so you can specify here, you know, like minimum or ma maximum pods. And I'm going to set my concurrency target to one. So create, actually, let's make this auto scale window, but let's a little shorter. OK, so this should be the same thing. So I'm deploying my application as a serverless application in, uh, in my project. So let's. Uh, Give this a second so we can see that it's starting up. Um, you know, we can look at the uh, logs here and see that you know it started in 90 milliseconds, which isn't so bad for Java, right? <laughs> and uh, so if we go look at our application now, let's open the URL. We can see oh, it's the same thing, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, we can go look at our places. And again, we can see the data being loaded from the database that's also running in my project. So I have a Postgres database here. And I'm going to hit refresh a couple times and then uh, go to my 
instance of Jaeger that I've deployed here as well. And we should see that uh, the same kind of uh, thing is going to happen, right? We're going to get the same data, except this time we're running on, uh, on Kubernetes, on an OpenShift uh, instance. And we can see that also in this case, it was able to find the service automatically uh, by um, just adding my uh, instrumentation to my code. So just that dependency and then uh, telling it where to find it. And so we can see here, we have those requests that were just made a few seconds ago when I hit refresh. And then uh, again, we can see that uh, it's, uh, it did its request in 1.75 milliseconds, so quite a bit faster than on my local machine, so that's good, right? <laughs> Ideally, our, our cloud environment is gonna be a little more performant than our, than our local machine. But as you can see, I mean, this demo is very simple, right? I mean, there's no kind of uh, crazy stuff that I had to add. Um, in, uh, in this case, because we're using serverless, we're now auto-scaled to zero, um, but you know, my uh, traces are still there, so I can still find, you know, if there were issues, I can find which container, which pod was, uh, was mis misbehaving, um, and what uh, line of my code was involved in everything. So let's do one more fun thing. Uh, let's send a bunch of requests to, uh, to this. Uh, I had, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's send a thousand requests with a thousand uh, concurrent, well, a thousand concurrent requests, and then make it see, uh, see if it, it'll handle my requests um, uh, in a nice way, right? So we can see that it's creating uh, 200, 300, and whatever pods, um, <laughs> hopefully not blowing up my entire cluster here. Uh, but let's see how, uh, how this is uh, behaving. So I'm gonna go and uh, make sure that I hit some, uh, create some requests. And so these should be going to, uh, to, the, same, uh, to the same application. And then uh, if we go look at our uh, tracing, we can see that you know, even though we have a whole bunch of distributed applications, we can see that you know, they're still being handled uh, by the same central collection, uh, uh, collection place. And so you can see that, you know, in this case, I have one application running. Had I had multiple, they would all uh, stream into this. I would be able to trace through those different uh, services. Um, if I have uh, different services running on different clusters and they're connected, um, same thing, right? They're all streaming to my central collector and then uh, I, can see, I can access and have observability of my application. And you know, like thanks to Knative, we can see that we can scale up very fast, scale down very fast, because now all those pods are terminating because I'm not sending any more requests. And so it's just gonna go to sleep uh, and wait for more requests to come in. And you know, as we saw in the previous keynote session, that's good for the environment, right? <laughs> not, not using all those uh, requests. All right, so that was a very quick uh, introduction into OpenTelemetry, Knative, and uh, also a little bit of Quarkus. Sorry about uh, the Java stuff. Um, I, I like Java. Um, we uh, at Red Hat uh, developers, we are uh, lucky because uh, Red Hat is also uh, likes to sponsor some of our books and makes them available uh, for users. So if you're interested, there's a whole bunch more books. There's actually some, uh, some Knative books, I believe, too. Um, so you can download them for free, uh, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Red Hat. And then um, that's, uh, that's about it for my talk. So uh, thank you, and um, have a nice rest of the day. So I think we have one minute for uh, maybe one question, if anybody has a question. I have stickers, so if you ask a question, you can have a sticker. And if you don't ask a question, you can also have a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> we have 59 seconds for a question. No, nobody? All right, you can find me uh, in, the, in the room uh, over there uh, if you have any questions and you don't want to be put on the spot, so that's fine too. So, uh, oh, there we go. One question. I don't know if we have it's a, a microphone a, in the aisle. In the aisle is a microphone. Ah, there's a, there's a microphone. If maybe somebody can pass it along. <laughs> uh, 
Thanks for the demo. I just wanted to ask uh, one simple question. Like when you showed up the, um, the red, uh, open shift, right? And then you tried to deploy the application, right? You had actually the serverless option. Is it like uh, the K-native implementation on top of that open shift and yeah. you to use that? That's you, what it means? Yeah, exactly. Thanks for asking that question. Yeah, so because I uh, added the K-native or the open shift serverless, which uses K-native uh, operator, um, I get that option in the in the OpenShift UI to deploy as uh, as serverless. Yeah. Is it part of the OpenShift platform itself to yeah. have that? Uh, yeah. So you can add the OpenShift serverless operator as part of the your, your OpenShift platform. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's time. We have to go to break and transition to the next yeah, presenter. I'll, I'll answer the question. Yep. You now. can you can ask some questions offline. Okay. Thank you.